I'd like to do an example involving conceptual ideas around expanding and compressing ideal gases. These are classic thermodynamic processes and they help us understand a lot of the ideas of energy and work and heat, all these concepts that fit together when we study thermal physics. So to begin with, I want to show you a diagram on a pressure volume, PV diagram, of an ideal gas process, really a set of processes. Uh, I've got uh, the system that starts here at a uh, particular state that has volume three times V1, three times some reference volume, and at pressure two times P1, twice some reference pressure. And that's our initial state. And as drawn here, in step A, we're going to keep the volume fixed and reduce the pressure of the gas. Uh, you may be able to imagine things you could do to make that happen, but the process is drawn here. In step B, we're going to keep the pressure fixed and reduce the volume. And finally, in step C, we're going to increase the pressure and the volume at constant rates to take us straight back to our initial state of the system. So the diagram here with these different arrows, these different lines on this diagram, it shows the story of what happens to the system in this process. Now the fact that this combined process A, B, and C together starts and ends at the same point is technically called a cyclic process because it goes in cycles. You could repeat it over and over. But right now, I just want to think through the quantities that, of, of work and heat and change in internal energy that correspond to each step along this path. And to do that, I'm going to make reference to a handful of different uh, facts about thermal physics. And uh, in no particular order, we've got the first law of thermodynamics, which I've jotted down, down here, that says the change in the internal energy of a system is equal to the work on the system by the environment, plus the heat into the system by the environment. I've never known why we use Q for heat, but there it is. Um, so that's going to be one of our key principles that relates these things. And in fact, as we will see, in most cases, that is going to be the equation we use to figure out the heat involved, the Q, because we have more direct ways of finding the delta U and the work. Uh, delta U we can often figure out by looking at the equipartition theorem. Equipartition applies reasonably well to ideal gases. Uh, well, I guess if it's ideal, it applies to the ideal gas case. As long as it's ideal, it works. And the equipartition theorem just tells us that the total thermal energy of the system, at least relative in the range that it's measured, that total thermal energy is equal to the number of molecules, N, times the number of degrees of freedom per molecule, F, times one-half K Boltzmann's constant, T, temperature in Kelvin, or some absolute scale. So that's the equipartition theorem. F is the number of degrees of freedom per molecule. In general, we're going to consider here a diatomic gas. Uh, ordinary air is a pretty good approximation to a diatomic gas. And so we're going to assume that it's a diatomic gas that has five degrees of freedom per molecule and n molecules. So okay, we've got that, that's another tool we're going to use along the way. Uh, we'll think in terms of the ideal gas law, PV equals NKT, the number, the pressure times the volume equals, now chemists would do little n RT, where little n is the number of moles of the material. Physicists tend to think in terms of particles, so big N is the number of particles, K is Boltzmann's constant, little n times R is the same as big N times K, they're just where you count differently. Um, we've got the ideal gas law, and the final tool we're going to use, the final ingredient we're going to use, is work, which is, well, work is usually defined as force times distance, but you can show in a relatively straightforward way that that's also equivalent to pressure times volume. And the work on the system is the pressure of the system time integrated over the change in volume. That's the idea. The negative sign there is what gives us the work on the system. If we want to know by the work by the system on the environment, we would put a positive sign there. Okay, so those are the ingredients we're going to use. And to start with, I want to do just a conceptual piece, just conceptually thinking about this, and think about whether each step in this process is positive, negative, or zero. So, for example, uh, let, let's just go through one piece at a time, one step at a time. In step A, 
the work is the integral of pressure d volume. We know from math that's just the area under the curve. Well, our curve here is a vertical line. There is no area under that curve. So in step A, the work on the system is zero. Now, at the same time, in step A, we want to think about the change in energy of the system, the delta U for the system. And for that, the tool we're going to use is the equipartition theorem that relates energy to temperature. If the temperature goes up, then the stored energy goes up, and vice versa. How do we figure out the temperature? Well, for that, we're going to look at the ideal gas law. And that'll explain why I've drawn these brown curves on this diagram. The ideal gas law tells us that pressure times volume equals NKT. And so, in particular, uh, you can immediately see that pressure is equal to NKT divided by the volume. That's, our, uh, that's solving for pressure. This is a 1 over V. It's a constant over V if we take a constant temperature. So these brown curves that I've drawn are curves of constant temperature that are labeled arbitrarily T low, T middle, and T high. Uh, and each one has a constant numerator here. And as the volume increases, the pressure decreases and vice versa. So that's these three things. You can see in this case that process A takes us from T high to T middle, from a higher to a middling temperature. So that means that our delta, our delta T, our temperature went down, so our delta U, our, our internal energy change, is negative. So I'm going to put a negative sign here to represent that negative change in internal energy. And finally, for Q, for heat, well, I can take the first law of thermodynamics and solve it for heat. The Q in is equal to the change in internal energy minus the work on the system. That's just solving the first law for heat. And when we do that, we'll see that a negative minus zero is a negative. So Q in is negative. This makes sense. To make the pressure go down at fixed volume, we need to extract thermal energy from the system. We need to have energy leave the system as heat, which will make the pressure go down. And that brings us in this story. All right, next step, process B. This is a process where we are compressing the gas at constant vol or at, 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 we're, co we're compressing the gas to smaller volumes, but at constant pressure. So if we are compressing the gas, that means we're pushing it inward. Intuitively, I expect the work on the system to be a positive number if I am compressing the gas. And sure enough, looking at this integral, the integral of PDV is the area under the curve. And the issue is we're going leftward here. And a, an integral to the left ends up being negative. And so we would have the area of this rectangle being a negative number because we're going to the left. And then the minus sign here is what makes it positive. So sure enough, we get a positive here. It's a negative because the integral is going in the negative v direction. And it's a, then the integral is negative, And then the minus sign there brings us to positive. Delta u. The same kind of reasoning from temperature applies here as well. We're going from this state to this state. The temperature is going down from middle to low. And so if the temperature goes down, the U goes down. So this is negative. Putting those together to find the heat, delta U minus work is a negative minus a positive will give me something that's even more negative. Got that. OK. Next, we'll look at step C. Here we go, along there. That is something that is, again, if I want to find the work, I'm going to find the area under that curve is the integral of PDV. That is, that's moving in the positive volume direction. So it's a positive integral. So the minus sign here means it's a negative work. And again, that makes sense, because the system is expanding and pushing the environment away in that, in that place. So the system is doing work on the environment, not vice versa. So the work on the system is negative because the work by the system is positive. All right? Change in energy. Well, we're going from the lowest temperature to the highest temperature. Temperature's going way up. Energy's going way up. This must be positive. And finally, for heat, Q, Q equals delta U minus W. We've got a positive minus a negative will be even more positive. So that's what we have for this step. Putting it all together, well, it's kind of hard to see how this will work. We've got some positives and some negatives in each row. 
let's think about it for the overall system, the overall thing. Uh, certainly for delta U total, I can say my initial temperature was the hot temperature and it did a cycle and came back to the same temperature. That tells me that my delta U is zero. That will always be true for a cyclic process, a process that brings you back to where you started. So I've got zero there. What about work? We've got a positive and negative. At first glance, you might think, oh, they cancel out to zero as well. But think about those integrals. One was negative because it was this integral going, well, one was negative, one was positive. And, but which one was bigger? Each one is looking at the area under the curve. The area under step B is this rectangle. The area under step C is the rectangle plus the triangle above it. So step C's magnitude is bigger than step B's magnitude by exactly the area of that triangle, the physically relevant area in pressure volume terms. So C is a bigger effect than B, so the net effect is a negative work on the system. And then we can conclude, based on this, that zero minus a negative gives me a positive. And so conceptually, that's what's going on in this process. That, that's what's going on in this cycle. This is how the, the positive and negatives of energy, of all these first law of thermodynamics energy things work for the cycle. And this is a good step to do anytime you want to analyze a cycle, is to think through where will the pluses and minuses and zeros be in this table. Next step, of course, is to go through and analyze this mathematically to get the actual numbers. And uh, we could have done that without doing this step, but I like the conceptual step first because it helps me know what to expect from my math. With that, I'll stop here and I'll move on to another video for the math part.